2 Chronicles chapter 18 Now Jehoshaphat had great wealth and honour, and he allied himself with Ahab by marriage. Some years later he went down to see Ahab in Samaria. Ahab slaughtered many sheep and cattle for him, and the people with him, and urged him to attack Ramoth-Gilead. Ahab, king of Israel, asked Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Will you go with me against Ramoth-Gilead? Jehoshaphat replied, I am as you are, and my people as your people. We will join you in the war. But Jehoshaphat also said to the king of Israel, First seek the counsel of the Lord. So the king of Israel brought together the prophets, four hundred men, and asked them, Shall we go to war against Ramoth-Gilead, or shall I not? Go, they answered, for God will give it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat asked, Is there no longer a prophet of the Lord here, whom we can inquire of? The king of Israel answered Jehoshaphat, There is still one prophet through whom we can inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, because he never prophesies anything good about me, but always bad. He is Micaiah, son of Imla. The king should not say such a thing, Jehoshaphat replied. So the king of Israel called one of his officials and said, Bring Micaiah, son of Imla, at once. Dressed in their royal robes, the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, were sitting on their thrones at the threshing floor by the entrance of the gate of Samaria, with all the prophets prophesying before them. Now Zedekiah, son of Kenayana, had made iron horns, and he declared, This is what the Lord says. With these you will gore the Arameans until they are destroyed. All the other prophets were prophesying the same thing. Attack Ramoth-Gilead and be victorious, they said, for the Lord will give it into the king's hand. The messenger who had gone to summon Micaiah said to him, Look, the other prophets without exception are predicting success for the king. Let your word agree with theirs and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, as surely as the Lord lives, I can tell him only what my God says. When he arrived, the king asked him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth-Gilead, or shall I not? Attack and be victorious, he answered, for they will be given into your hand. The king said to him, How many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then Micaiah answered, I saw all Israel scattered on the hills like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, These people have no master. Let each one go home in peace. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Didn't I tell you that he never prophesies anything good about me but only bad? Micaiah continued, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, with all the multitudes of heaven standing on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab, king of Israel, into attacking Ramoth-Gilead and going to his death there? One suggested this, and another that. Finally, a spirit came forward, stood before the Lord, and said, I will entice him. By what means? the Lord asked. I will go and be a deceiving spirit in the mouths of all his prophets, he said. You will succeed in enticing him, said the Lord. Go and do it. So now the Lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouths of these prophets of yours. The Lord has decreed disaster for you. Then Zedekiah, son of Kenayana, went up and slapped Micaiah in the face. Which way did the Spirit from the Lord go when he went from me to speak to you? he asked. Micaiah replied, You will find out on the day you go to hide in an inner room. The king of Israel then ordered, Take Micaiah and send him back to Ammon, the ruler of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, This is what the king says. Put this fellow in prison and give him nothing but bread and water until I return safely. Micaiah declared, If you ever return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me.
Then he added, Mark my words, all you people. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah went up to Ramoth-Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will enter the battle in disguise, but you wear your royal robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Now the king of Aram had ordered his chariot commanders, Do not fight with anyone, small or great, except the king of Israel. When the chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat, they thought, This is the king of Israel. So they turned to attack him, but Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. God drew them away from him. For when the chariot commanders saw that he was not the king of Israel, they stopped pursuing him. But someone drew his bow at random and hit the king of Israel between the breastplate and the scale armor. The king told the chariot driver, Wheel around and get me out of the fighting. I've been wounded. All day long the battle raged, and the king of Israel propped himself up in his chariot facing the Arameans until evening. Then at sunset he died. 2 Chronicles chapter 19 When Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, returned safely to his palace in Jerusalem, Jehu the seer, the son of Hanani, went out to meet him and said to the king, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Because of this the wrath of the Lord is on you. There is, however, some good in you, for you have rid the land of the Asherah poles and have set your heart on seeking God. Jehoshaphat lived in Jerusalem, and he went out again among the people from Beersheba to the hill country of Ephraim, and turned them back to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. He appointed judges in the land, in each of the fortified cities of Judah. He told them, Consider carefully what you do, because you are not judging for mere mortals, but for the Lord, who is with you whenever you give a verdict. Now let the fear of the Lord be on you. Judge carefully. For with the Lord our God there is no injustice or partiality or bribery. In Jerusalem also, Jehoshaphat appointed some of the Levites, priests, and heads of Israelite families to administer the law of the Lord and to settle disputes. And they lived in Jerusalem. He gave them these orders. You must serve faithfully and wholeheartedly in the fear of the Lord. In every case that comes before you from your people who live in the cities, whether bloodshed or other concerns of the law, commands, decrees or regulations, you are to warn them not to sin against the Lord. Otherwise his wrath will come on you and your people. Do this and you will not sin. Amariah, the chief priest, will be over you in any matter concerning the Lord. And Zebediah, son of Ishmael, the leader of the tribe of Judah, will be over you in any matter concerning the king, and the Levites will serve as officials before you. Act with courage, and may the Lord be with those who do well. Acts chapter 19 While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, Then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about twelve men in all. Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some of them became obstinate. They refused to believe and publicly maligned the way. So Paul left them. He took the disciples with him and had discussions daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This went on for two years, 
so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to those who were ill and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, In the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. When this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they had done. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drachmas. In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. After all this had happened, Paul decided to go to Jerusalem, passing through Macedonia and Achaia. After I have been there, he said, I must visit Rome also. He sent two of his helpers, Timothy and Erastus, to Macedonia, while he stayed in the province of Asia a little longer. About that time there arose a great disturbance about the way. A silversmith named Demetrius, who made silver shrines of Artemis, brought in a lot of business for the craftsmen there. He called them together along with the workers in related trades and said, you know, my friends, that we receive a good income from this business, and you see and hear how this fellow Paul has convinced and led astray large numbers of people here in Ephesus, and in practically the whole province of Asia. He says the gods made by human hands are no gods at all. Well, there is danger not only that our trade will lose its good name, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis will be discredited, and the goddess herself, who is worshipped throughout the province of Asia and the world, will be robbed of her divine majesty. When they heard this, they were furious and began shouting, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! Soon the whole city was in an uproar. The people seized Gaius and Aristarchus, Paul's traveling companions from Macedonia, and all of them rushed into the theater together. Paul wanted to appear before the crowd, but the disciples wouldn't let him. Even some of the officials of the province, friends of Paul, sent him a message begging him not to venture into the theatre. The assembly was in confusion. Some were shouting one thing, some another. Most of the people didn't even know why they were there. The Jews in the crowd pushed Alexander to the front, and they shouted instructions to him. He motioned for silence in order to make a defence before the people. But when they realised he was a Jew... They all shouted in unison for about two hours, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! The city clerk quietened the crowd and said, Fellow Ephesians, doesn't all the world know that the city of Ephesus is the guardian of the temple of the great Artemis and of her image which fell from heaven? Therefore, since these facts are undeniable, you ought to calm down and not do anything rash. You have brought these men here, though they have neither robbed temples nor blasphemed our goddess. If then Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a grievance against anybody, the courts are open, and there are proconsuls. They can press charges. If there is anything further you want to bring up, it must be settled in a legal assembly. As it is, we are in danger of being charged with rioting because of what's happened today. In that case, we would not be able to account for this commotion, since there is no reason for it. After he had said this, he dismissed the assembly. 
Psalm 2 Why do the nations conspire, and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up, and the rulers band together, against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. He rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, You are my son, today I have become your father. Ask me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron, you will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son, or he will be angry, and your way will lead to your destruction, for his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Proverbs chapter 28 The wicked flee, though no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. When a country is rebellious, it has many rulers, but a ruler with discernment and knowledge maintains order. A ruler who oppresses the poor is like driving rain that leaves no crops. Those who forsake instruction praise the wicked, but those who heed it resist them. Evildoers do not understand what is right, but those who seek the Lord understand it fully. Better the poor, whose way of life is blameless, than the rich, whose ways are perverse. A discerning son heeds instruction, but a companion of gluttons disgraces his father. Whoever increases wealth by taking interest or profit from the poor amasses it for another who will be kind to the poor. If anyone turns a deaf ear to my instruction, even their prayers are detestable. Whoever leads the upright along an evil path will fall into their own trap, but the blameless will receive a good inheritance. The rich are wise in their own eyes. One who is poor and discerning sees how deluded they are. When the righteous triumph, there is great elation. But when the wicked rise to power, people go into hiding. Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Blessed is the one who always trembles before God, but whoever hardens their heart falls into trouble. Like a roaring lion or a charging bear is a wicked ruler over a helpless people. A tyrannical ruler practices extortion, but one who hates ill-gotten gain will enjoy a long reign. Anyone tormented by the guilt of murder will seek refuge in the grave. Let no one hold them back. The one whose way of life is blameless is kept safe, but the one whose ways are perverse will fall into the pit. Those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies will have their fill of poverty. A faithful person will be richly blessed, but one eager to get rich will not go unpunished. To show partiality is not good, yet a person will do wrong for a piece of bread. The stingy are eager to get rich and are unaware that poverty awaits them. Whoever rebukes a person will in the end gain favor rather than one who has a flattering tongue. Whoever robs their father or mother and says, it's not wrong, is partner to one who destroys. The greedy stir up conflict, but those who trust in the Lord will prosper. Those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. Those who give to the poor will lack nothing, but those who close their eyes to them 
receive many curses. When the wicked rise to power, people go into hiding. But when the wicked perish, the righteous thrive.